July 25th, 2021. The final day of my official childhood. On that day, I turned 18 years old, officially an adult. Life has suddenly begun to move very fast, and like many young people my age, I've been yanked and dragged by the collar of my shirt at 100 miles per hour. My teachers tell me it's time to think about the future and that life without a college degree is a failure. My peers also add to the pressure. They tell me the same thing, but also add a mounting pressure to join their immature lifestyles. Asking me if I've lost my virginity yet, wanting to talk about a woman's body as if I see them as some type of product for my use, going on and on about the serious trip they've had on some large list of drugs I now know. And if it's not about sex and drugs, it's about how to become an adult quicker. Yes, society tells me to get a job, go into debt for a degree I probably won't use, and spend as much time away from home as possible. A year from now, I'm supposed to be moving out. But just five years ago, I was some 13-year-old kid talking about Minecraft, sliding down a slip and slide with my best friend Ian. Boy, what can change in five years? Ian is no longer my best friend. I hardly play Minecraft anymore, and my sense of ignorant bliss only leaves a trace. On that day, five years ago, childhood began to end. This is a tribute to childhood. My 13th birthday party was a blast. Just like every single birthday up until then, it was an amazing day and the day I got a computer. At 13 years old, I had already decided I was going to be making videos for the rest of my life. And that computer was the first step there. But let's not talk about gifts. We all know how awkward it is to watch someone open gifts, let alone be the one to open them. Frankly, I do believe this was the last day of my real childhood. After this day, everything would begin to change. Social media hopped into my life, looks became relevant to me, I no longer thought girls were weird, and well, I really began to grow up. On my 13th birthday, my dad made a homemade slip inside, and it was kind of a tradition. We set it up in the neighborhood, and all the neighbors were welcome. Everyone smiled and laughed, and my friends and I, well, we were just a bunch of boys, sliding down the slip inside, trying to hit each other, running around, blissfully ignorant. It was beautiful. Every single day of every single year before then was just the same. So today, I'd like to take you through life before then. The things you and I can both relate to and the things we can. One of the core pieces of being young in my life was being with my mom and dad. It's not often that a parent lets their five-year-old go wandering off doing however they please. Much of your time in early life is spent with parents. And for me, the best memories from the beginning are of time spent with my parents. I grew up in the early 2000s. It felt like the world at that time was in this awkward teenage stage. I mean, everything was awkward. Style was off. Like, really, really off. Tech was new stuff mixed in with all of the old stuff. And us kids got to experience the old and Yeah, it was a weird time, though that doesn't really mean it was bad. I'm extremely grateful for it. Like phone books, the giant phone books you'd get on your doorstep with everyone's number in it. I remember searching through those, finding my parents' names and convincing myself we were famous. We also had huge boxy TVs. Four by three was still a thing. It wasn't odd to see a house with a flat screen and then some huge TV from the 90s. While that was all great, one of the biggest things I'll miss was the mall. Malls are still around today, but something is off. It's hard to find a mall that matches the feeling of a mall from the 2000s and early 2010s gave you. No matter how full a mall gets these days, they just feel empty now. The stores are useless. Today it wouldn't be uncommon to see four shoe stores lined up next to each other with virtually no customers in them. When I was a kid, malls had games like glow in the dark golf. There was all types of food vendors too, like I could get a basic sandwich or some crazy Greek thing. My hometown mall hardly leaves a shadow of what it used to be. It doesn't even look the same. It's just a hollow shell. Even when we were just running errands with my mom, it was something special. It was a giant coliseum to me that contained everything that I could ever think of. And speaking of errands, to me, errands were special. I was blessed enough to have a stay-at-home mom, so we did everything together. 
Nothing beat the feeling of shopping at Target and at the end getting a Slurpee and maybe some popcorn from their vending station. It was even cooler when mom left us there at the beginning while she shopped. We just sat there sipping our drinks feeling like a couple of big kids. Now I keep saying we. Well, that would be my brother and I, Jake. That was my best friend growing up. We fought a lot, but that was part of the fun. And regardless, we had each other's backs and always will. I think one of the funniest things my brother and I did was we were always performing. We would lip sync, dance, wrestle, dress up. I remember making homemade tickets for our parents to come to our concert. And I mean, those concerts that we had would go on for over 30 minutes. We, we truly had a lot of fun. And with fun comes the not so fun. We fought a lot because Jake is such a competitive kid. I mean, I could never win. Even if I could, I couldn't because my little bro couldn't accept it. And when you lose all of the time, it gets pretty frustrating. To this day, I can rarely beat my brother playing video games. It feels impossible. But, you know, it's also impossible to lose that love that I do have for my brother. Okay, so, <laughs> um, I spent two years in preschool. Yeah, 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 laugh it up. It's actually just so I wouldn't be such a young kid going into kindergarten. But preschool was amazing. I loved it. And yeah, I am grateful that I got two years of it. I really enjoyed it. We had these nights that were meant to give the other parent a night to themselves, and it gave the kids a chance to experience preschool with their parents. I think that has to be one of the best experiences of my childhood. It was me being authentically myself with my parents, and it really didn't get much better than that. In preschool, I had two main friends. My first year, it was this kid named Jarrett. I honestly don't remember much about us. Um, I, I will say one thing, I had a had an imaginary friend named Jobit, a cloud with uh, one of those like spinny hats on his head. And I'm pretty sure Jobit uh, was inspired by the name Jarrett, but I could be wrong. Anyways, I went over to his house once and uh, I peed my pants in front of him because he wouldn't let me use the bathroom. The real friend came in my second year. That would be my childhood best friend, Ian. And I'm gonna embarrass you, man, but my first memory of you was telling my mom I was scared of you because you had both of your hands in your pants touching your butt. Like, you just barely missed those back pockets. But it would end up that Ian and I would become best friends, and I think we were great friends. I remember making whirlpools in his pool uh, that they would set up in his backyard in the summer, and we played all types of video games together, and when elementary school came around, that friendship sort of just kind of simmered out to a stop for a while, but only just for a while. What I almost forgot to talk about while writing this was Star Wars. If you don't know, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I love it. And it's a huge part in why I do videos today. George Lucas, all of that, the, the, the craziness of it made me want to make my own movie one day. And one of my earliest memories in my childhood was watching Star Wars A New Hope with my dad in front of a small 4x3 TV. At the time, I called it Star Horse because I don't think I had much of a clue of what war was, which really is pretty amazing. So yeah, anyways, I thought people were saying horse, not wars. It's a rather small memory, but it plays a huge part in who I am. It's weird how truly short childhood is, but even just this first part of my childhood was so packed with excitement and great memories. There is so much to talk about, it's unreal, but for the sake of storytelling, meaningfulness, we should move on. However, I do want to shout out some of the smaller but very memorable things from my childhood. The vacations when I was young were not stressful at all. I remember going to Arizona and getting waffles at my great aunt's house. And the vibe in California in the late 2000s was crazy as a kid. There was so much going on. I remember going there on the plane, building a small Lego set that my mom had got me. We went with my grandparents and stayed in this great place with a pool all to myself. I just absolutely loved that trip. Another thing was every single birthday growing up, I had root beer floats and nothing could beat that. I didn't do cake, I did root beer floats. And I love my parents for that. Also, I used to ride a pony uh, when I was little named Rosie. I think I hated her, but, but damn, look at me, I, I was a pimp. Lastly, I spent a ton of time with my cousin Keegan growing up and we were crazy together. And I don't know, I just love that. Anyways, that just about wraps up the beginning of my childhood.
Then came elementary school and on, a stage of growing up, but still blissfully walking through life. After the preschool era of my life, I think I got to have more fun. While that part of my life was so incredibly blissful, I can't even begin to explain how blissful it was, it wasn't as crazy and fun as my actual childhood. I think elementary school forces you to become a bit more of an individual and make more of your own decisions. And not only did I fundamentally change as just a little person, but so much happened. I began elementary school just a bit before 2010, and the 2010s had a lot to offer if you can remember. Well, let's start at the beginning, shall we? Kindergarten. It's hard to put a label as introvert or expert on young kids, especially when so many people change. Though, when kindergarten came along, you could definitely see some of the core traits that make me an introvert today. In my first year of school, I had no friends, and I actually only went to school for half of the day. I didn't really talk to many people, however, I'll remember a few things from kindergarten. First off, my teacher. She was a really, really great teacher. She was so nice to me and made me feel a lot more comfortable there. Also the worst memory. I believe we had to pick out a song from a bunch of CDs, which is crazy to think. Nowadays you just go on the internet. So anyways, I picked a song from a case that I thought looked cool. I didn't listen to the song, I said that looks like a cool case that this CD is in, I'm gonna choose that. Uh, anyways, we had to do a dance in front of the class to this music, and I really had no clue what to do. So I don't know, I, I started doing this weird thing as a dance, and I got laughed at by a few people, and you know, I remember going to sit down with my feelings absolutely crushed, and, and to this day, I still have a fear of dancing in front of people. Kindergarten was, well, interesting to say the least. I remember one Christmas during this time we finally got our Wii. Like just a year or two after release, I believe. And for me, the Wii will forever be a part of who I am. It has an influence on me that I can never ever forget. It wasn't just the games, it was the music, the friends, the uniqueness of it. I loved it. To this day, I had that same Wii, and I could never get rid of it. I either first discovered the Wii through my friend Ian, or my first friend in our neighborhood, Zoan. And regardless, I played a lot of games with Zoan. He was a good few years older than me, so I always had the easy job when we played video games, but he was seriously skilled. I remember always watching in awe at what he could do. I spent so much time with him, he made me laugh a ton, and truly, I enjoyed watching him game. I guess you could say he was probably the nerdiest kid I had ever met, but that was far from a bad thing. Oddly enough, Zoan's interests are at the root of mine. We played on the GameCube, the Wii, the Xbox, all of it. Not to mention growing up, we did a lot of Lego stuff together. And I also remember watching Dragon Ball Z Kai with him, anime. I mean, we did some really nerdy stuff together, but how could I judge someone who was just trying to enjoy their life? He grew my love of Star Wars, he grew my love of Nintendo, and he grew my love of video games. We'd spend hours together building Legos and playing video games. I honestly don't know what he's up to these days, but I really wish him the best. I'll always see him as my friend. Minecraft, the reason this video exists. Another definition of nostalgia could very well be Minecraft. I was listening to Minecraft music one day and I thought about my childhood and I thought about turning 18, and I don't know, I just knew I had to make this video. So here we are. Minecraft is so, so much more than a game. It's so much packed into such a simple game. You mine, and you craft. Yet you have a soundtrack that's unforgettable, and at times goes unnoticed when you're playing. There are countless ways to play the game, everything is up to you. And what's amazing for me is that it's all been saved through the years. It's a time capsule to the past. Logging onto my Xbox 360, I can go back to the very beginning. <laughs> the very beginning. I'm so lucky that I can remember the beginning. Now I was at Ian's house, watching everyone play, and when my dad picked me up, I told him that was the game I really wanted. So we got home, and we bought it for $20 off the Xbox store. My dad and I went to the tutorial world, it loaded in, and just like that, it was done. The feeling of excitement, experiencing it for the first time right there. The thought of what was beyond that entrance. <laughs> oh man, nothing could beat the feeling of that time. I didn't play the game like most people. 
my brother and I did this thing we called creative survival. Basically, we'd cheat our way through survival mode, but we didn't care. We'd spend hours building and exploring tutorial worlds because on the Xbox, every new update included one. There was no feeling like waking up on a summer morning, opening Minecraft, and being surprised by a new update. You would scroll through all the new things that had been added. It was great. My brother and I would spend hours playing and taming ocelots or whatever the next thing was. For my brother and I, that was bonding time. And you know, also, I remember playing with my other friends like Zoan and my best neighbor, Joey. Ah, Joey, Joey, Joey. He'll always be my homie. The first time I met Joey, all I wanted to do was go home. Home was about 150 yards away, but it didn't matter. I wanted to go home. We didn't really care to meet each other that much from what I remember. He was a kindergartner and I was a first grader, but as time went on, we would become really good friends. My favorite sport of all time is football. And you know who taught me football? Joey, which is crazy to me. It changed my life. It had such a trickle down effect, it's crazy. I coach football now. While we played Legos and video games, together the biggest thing we did was sports. So many sports. I remember when we were younger, a lot of the time we'd pretend to be pro athletes. We'd pretend for hours him, my brother, and I. And of course, we'd play against each other. Competition. I mean, you expect it with sports, but damn, we fought a lot. I tackled Joey once because he wouldn't listen to me. And I ended up having to explain myself to his dad. We fought all the time, especially him and my brother. We could never have those two go against each other because they would only fight. But I'll tell you what, everything was better on a Friday getting off of the bus. Not because it was Friday per se, but because if you saw Colin and Lance waiting for you to get off the bus, you knew you had to have a good few hours ahead of you. And I mean good, great. We all know nothing beats friends on Friday. It just makes sense. The second that bus started slow, we were standing. Colin and Lance are Jake and I on steroids. And they were the only other two brothers that lived close to us. And for some reason in neighborhoods, people don't like brothers, at least in ours. Both them and us were always told we were too rough, and I swear everyone always looked at us badly. But I almost feel like that helped us get along better. I don't remember doing too many games with them. We definitely did a lot of sports, but really, we did a lot of dumb and silly kid stuff. Running our bikes into bushes, sneaking out of the football field, doing crazy stunts, and who could forget Colin containment? Colin was a very strong kid, and so... Yikes. <laughs> Uh, we play this game where we would literally try to kidnap Colin, Lance, Joey, my brother, and I. We'd literally pin him down and duct tape him up and throw him in the trunk. And if you want to overreact, that's great, but that's what we did. We were a bunch of stupid boys. And I'll really miss being a stupid boy. I'm gonna really miss riding on the bus and, and seeing them. Well, I already do actually, but this is one of those rare instances where the memory almost as good as the experience. Up until fourth grade, my best friend was a kid named Alex. Yep, Alec and Alex. My first memory of us was filling up our mouths with water in first grade and looking at each other, trying not to laugh. What Alex and I had was a true friendship between boys. We never really did anything that crazy together, but we just enjoyed childhood together. His birthday was right around Halloween, and man, he sure loved Halloween. His parents always set the absolute best birthdays for him, and they really made me feel a part of the family. I haven't talked to him since elementary school, and, uh, well, I really miss him. However, in fourth grade, I met a lot of people. Most important of all, my best friend, Carlito. He was new to the school, and I automatically liked him. He was a funny and stupid kid, but he was going to be my stupid friend. Once I learned about football, I was all in and played every single day at recess. Unlike a lot of you, I never played groundies. I played football every single day. And well, in one of our first games of the year, Carlito joined us and he really sucked. I mean, so bad that he messed things up for his team. And a lot of people got really mad at him. So I went up to him and told him not to worry about what they said. And after that, we were pretty quickly best friends. Carlito and I laughed a lot and Hung out a lot. What's sad is I actually don't remember a ton of what we did together. 
I'll tell you one thing though, we battled out on NBA 2K14, head to head all of the time. In middle school, Carlito moved the city away and just like most friendships, ours sadly fizzled out. Another person I met was my friend Tyler, the kid who introduced me to Eminem. So here's the thing about Tyler is, he is an absolutely great kid now. And maybe he was then, but it, at the very least teachers didn't like him and people didn't seem to like him because they made him sit in the front of the bus. And I, I remember my little brother and I uh, would ride the bus together and I remember sitting next to Tyler and eventually uh, I always sat next to Tyler. It just became a, a thing that we, we did. And anyways, Tyler uh, introduced me to Eminem. Uh, which is, is, I don't know, kind of funny. We were was fourth graders, but that's who introduced me to Eminem. I also saw the bright side of Tyler. He was a really passionate kid that always treated me with respect, and we pretty quickly hit things off. I'm lucky to know him to this day, and I'll also know he'll always have my back. I know I'll always have his. There is something about the ignorant bliss of being a kid, something so amazing and delightful. I had so much fun in elementary school. The amazing field trips, even to the local college, that was one of my favorites. The summers that lasted forever and the school years that felt like an eternity. When middle school came along, my life just changed for the worse. There's, there's no way around it. it. It just got bad. In sixth grade, I sat across from a kid named Spencer. He was so funny. Uh, but he ended up taking his own life. And that changed my perception of life itself forever. I, I didn't know him like a lot of people did, but I did know him, and we really got along. It was a shock into the real world. Still a kid, but it started the rapid decline of childhood. In middle school, I lost all of my friends from before, and I just needed a new start, so I changed schools. I re-met Ian, which was great, and things were just like old times. We had a super fun time then, but I wasn't as much of a kid anymore. And well, when high school came along, I lost all of my friends. I had some for a bit, but no best friend anymore. And really no close friends a little while after that. Before December 24th, 2020, I didn't have friends. I was beginning to connect with people, but I still hadn't really hung out with anyone in months. Sophomore year through the middle of my junior year, I personally felt friendless. I had friends, but it wasn't what other people had. I rarely hung out with anyone. My childhood, was really gone by that point. But you know, it doesn't all have to be sad, because it's not. The thing about blissful ignorance is that it's ignorance. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to go back to those days, but they lack that deepness and emotional world I live in today. Though, childhood will always be a part of you. Ever since I was little, I loved having the camera on me. I always talked about making movies, and when the camera was on me, I thought we were making a movie. My love for making videos started all the way back then. I've always loved it. And maybe it took me a while to see, but my dream was always to make videos. Yeah, we all have dreams as children, and a lot of us stray away from them, but you don't have to. Just because you were a child doesn't make it stupid. I'm going to keep following my childhood dreams. So, on December 24th, 2020, I met the person I had been praying for for years. My girlfriend, Melanie. These past nine months with her have been past nine months of my entire life. I am happy. I don't think I felt that for a while. You see, life oftentimes doesn't feel clear, but that's okay. What makes life exciting is exactly that. It isn't clear. Childhood is over for me, but I'm not done growing up. And one day, I get to relive it all. I'm gonna have my own kids. And I am lucky enough to have the perfect blueprint to learn from. I love my mom and dad because they gave me the perfect childhood. I know so many people don't get to experience the childhood I did. I'm so grateful for mine. Remember, you have the opportunity to give someone else an amazing childhood. So do it. Take that chance when the opportunity comes because if you can give them even a slice of what my childhood was, They'll love you eternally. This was a tribute to childhood. I love and miss you. 
Goodbye.